Rugby's Championship Day at the All England Club, where the finalists were scheduled to enter court, the center court at precisely 2 p.m. London time. But rain showers have intervened, as is their wont during the fortnight, and start of play will be delayed, we hope only slightly. The crowd has assembled here. There have been sprinkles all morning, and they just most recently put the cover back on the court. Earlier, Venus Williams, who will be in her first Wimbledon final, arrived at the All England Club, followed not long thereafter by the defending champion, Lindsay Davenport. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan, and welcome to live coverage of the ladies' final on the 32nd year of Breakfast at Wimbledon here on NBC. It is just past 2 p.m. British summertime, and while center court is covered because of the uh, early afternoon rain that came back just moments ago, the American number two seed, Lindsay Davenport, and the number five seed, Venus Williams, are expected to battle shortly. For more on the ladies' final, let's take you to center court and our broadcast team, Ted Robinson, and three-time Wimbledon champion, Chris Everett. Thanks very much, Tim. It's a wonderful change for me to be wide awake for breakfast at Wimbledon, Chris. <laughs> Normally in California, rubbing my eyes at 6 in the morning. Well, we have two Americans, both over 6 feet, both from California. They hit the ball with incredible power, but there the similarities end. That, that's where it ends. I mean, they're very, very different. The contrasts are Venus Williams was brought up on public tennis courts with cracks and with steel nets. And Lindsay Davenport, you know, very posh country clubs. Uh, Lindsay Davenport is the meek and mild one, and Venus Williams is the bold and, if anything, cocky one. Venus Williams, you see her, his father, her father, all over the place. He'll probably have the American flag, I think, today draped around him. No one knows Lindsay Davenport's parents. I have never even met them. So there are so many contrasts that will make this match really interesting. All right, as a three-time champion yourself, Lindsay Davenport is the defending champ. What do you see as the keys today? I think that Lindsay has the advantage because every single Grand Slam final she's been in, she's ended up winning that final. That's bad news for Venus Williams. She needs to find a way how to handle Venus's power and still stay consistent. She's the more dependable one. On paper, she really should win this match. Now, Venus Williams, on the other hand, the big problem with her is, unfortunately, she's had two tremendous wins, one over Martina Hingis, the other over her sister. They've been very emotional wins. My question is, will she have a letdown, or can she continue the momentum and really get psyched up for this final match? She needs to harness her power. We've seen that power. She's made a lot of errors throughout the tournament. Can she harness the power and really stay focused during this match? I would imagine that right now she has her best friend Serena sitting next to her in that locker room making sure she stays Well, focused. I mean, they're very lucky to have one another, really. I mean, she arrived at the courts with Serena. They practice together. Serena's there by her side right now. It's interesting. Coaches and mothers are not allowed in the locker room, but sisters are. So, I mean, she's had someone to talk to and, and talk to about her nerves and her frustrations. And, oh, my gosh, you know, my first Wimbledon final. It's, it's really a tough task. The first time you reach a Wimbledon final, it, it, you, you wonder if it's asking too much for her to win this tournament because very few players have won this their first time they've reached the final. Well, you just saw a moment ago they've come back out to begin to remove the covers from center court. The rain has been extremely light here and it has stopped for the moment, so it appears that they're going to make another attempt to get the ladies' final going here very shortly on center court. But right now, let's go back to Tim Ryan. Well, thank you, Ted. That was an encouraging picture we just had. There was actually a patch of blue. There's Richard Williams. You heard Chris and Ted referring to him. Uh, he's here today for this championship final. He was unable to sit and watch his two daughters face each other in the semifinal match. Instead, he toured the streets of Wimbledon Village awaiting the outcome. Well, there is the best sign we've seen. They're pulling that cover back, and we hope to have this ladies' final underway shortly. We'll return to Wimbledon in a moment. Contenders, three continents, one winner. The new Lincoln LS. Motor Trend Car of the Year. I'm not really close to Anna Kornikova. First of all, 
There's that whole language thing. A P.E. ratio is price divided by earnings. Earnings per share is a company's net income minus preferred dividends. It's like she's speaking a different language. Can anyone say asset allocation? Meat, cap, small cap. When we created a smarter kind of investment firm, growth, fund, we created a smarter kind of investor. Besides, some of the other players are kind of jealous of her, you know, portfolio. chat online with someone three continents away. You can start a dot com from your bedroom. You can buy just about anything right from your computer. With the progress we're making, you may never have to be in the presence of another human being as you live. The world is changing. That's why we're doing what we can to help the human race stay united. The Championships Wimbledon, brought to you by Lincoln American Luxury. By Sealy Posturepedic, we support you night and day. By Charles Schwab, when we created a smarter kind of investment firm, we also created a smarter kind of investor. And by United Airlines, now offering more legroom with our newly completed Economy Plus section. Tim Ryan back at Wimbledon, a packed center court. An audience uh, obviously anticipating what should be a power-hitting final between these two strong young American women. A look at the sky, a little bit patches, a few patches of blue, but uh, still some threatening clouds. But they've rolled that tarpaulin back, and uh, they are bringing out the lines people and the ball boys shortly. So we'll return to Wimbledon. Right now, we're going to take you to the Sun America Sports Desk in New York. This is the patch of blue there to encourage her. Uh, but there will be a continued uh, delay here, and we have to warn you, of course, there could be uh, intermittent delays over the course of the day, uh, the way the weather looks today here in London. But we're going to bring you some tennis action, and that is from yesterday's semifinal match, the defending champion on the men's side, Pete Sampras. He played a qualifier, became quite a story, making his way all the way to the semifinals. Vladimir Volchkov from Belarus had to borrow some shorts to start this tournament was sponsored by the time he got to the semifinal. Leading the mini procession uh, once they are ready to enter onto the court. Richard Williams leading the applause for his daughter Venus. And here they come. The number five seed, Venus Williams, followed by the number two seed and defending champion, Lindsay Davenport. What a moment it must be for both these women, certainly for Venus Williams. Her first opportunity at a Wimbledon championship. We have an All-American final. Venus Williams and Lindsay Davenport, pair of Californians, although Venus now lives in Palm Beach, Florida. Curtsy to the Royal Box. And these women are now ready to do battle, and a battle it should be. And let's rejoin Ted Robinson and Chris Everett. Well, thanks very much, Tim. Ten times, Chris, in your life, you, you went through a, a morning like this, sitting, waiting to play. What, what have these young ladies just experienced? Well, I tell you, ten times I went through this, and I only won it three times, so I didn't seven bring times that I, up. I should have maybe changed my routine a little bit. But it's it's nerve-wracking. But you know, it's it's sort of like the price. You have to come to expect it. It's it's not a fun feeling. I mean, you always feel nervous. You always feel the tension. You just hope you're going to play your best tennis and not be paralyzed by the pressure. I mean, I've played matches where I've become so tense that I've been afraid to move. You know, your feet get stuck and 
your elbow doesn't go up for the serve like it normally does. So you just hope that you can just play some free tennis and, and put your best game because it's the biggest tournament in the world. Now, last year it was Lindsay Davenport who was playing in her first Wimbledon final and playing the great Steffi Graf. Probably not many expecting Lindsay to win. How did she get through that with those nerves? Well, I think she played a burned out Steffi Groff. I have to say that Steffi, uh, probably the greatest champion we've seen. I think Martina's the greatest champion on the grass courts, but Steffi certainly on all surfaces. And that's why she decided to retire because she wasn't getting mentally psyched up for every single match. Steffi had a tougher route to the final. She had a couple, she actually beat Venus in a very emotional match and beat her 6-4 in the third and then went three sets with Lucic. So I think Steffi had nothing left. Very much like Venus Williams is in danger of right now. Will she have enough left, enough excitement, enough momentum to carry her into, I mean, in her mind, maybe she's already won this title two times. Certainly against Hingis, that was a final, and against Serena. Well, Venus Williams, who played her very first Grand Slam event, and made the finals at the U.S. Open in 1997, lost to Martina Hingis. And in addressing this match today, Venus said, back then, almost three years ago, I didn't understand anything about strategy as they pose for the courtside photographers. She said, now it's different. Well, that was because she didn't play junior tennis. I mean, I'm, I'm a very uh, advocate of junior tennis because I think that's where you gain your experience and how to play the big points and pressure situations. And when she first came on the pro scene, yes, there was a lot of talent, physical raw talent and power, but it was a matter of if you felt that if you could get both Williams sisters into a close, tight match, that you'd win that match because you would have the more experience. It's been three years now. She's, I think she's ready. I mean, she proved that in the match against Martina Hingis. Well, Lindsay Davenport now 24 years of age. She's been in and out of that number one spot, jostling with Martina Hingis throughout year 2000. The marvelous singles record. Lakotseva, look at that second round. She, she is very lucky to be in this position. She was down three love, five points to make it four love, and came up with some great shots, but you know, just not playing her best tennis, looking a little rusty. And then, of course, the second week, Monica Sells, that was the match where she played better. Finally, six love in the third, she finally looked like she had reached top form. And then Elena Dockage, that was a pretty comfortable match for her. Eighth tournament for Lindsay, sixth time she's been in the finals. Much less tennis this year for Venus Williams, who turned 20 just prior to the Fortnite. And her current rank in the world, number five, only 15 matches, didn't play at all until May in the clay court season. She also, to me, looked rusty in the, the, I mean, remember, she's been out six months this year. That's what makes it incredible that she's in the final of this tournament. And But the first week looked rusty, but got through pretty comfortably. The second week was the, the more emotionally charged week for her. And again, to beat Martina Hingis, the number one player, that's her biggest win thus far in a Grand Slam tournament. And Serena, I think we were all glad when that match was over. <laughs> now after, I'm sure, being with Venus in the locker room, Serena Williams has now taken a seat alongside Dad. And there will be no concerns today about splitting the family rooting interests. It is what they hope is Venus's turn to win a Grand Slam title at center court Wimbledon. She'll have to beat the defending champ to do it. The match comes your way next. Richard Williams. Well, he's stirring things up already. Boy, and everybody jumped up in front of our booth, and I was wondering what they were looking at. And he, start, he did this in Lipton. Well, trying to be sure that he can get the crowd on the side of Venus Williams today. We had a chance to have both the participants Why? in this ladies' final speak about the other's game. I've had a lot of good successes against her in the past but watching her play here she looks like she's playing a little bit more solid and not making as many errors as she used to I've always found that the, the key is to really try and get her serve back and and not let her um, get into a real good groove on her serve and um, try and keep the balls deep and, and not let her get a lot of short balls and a lot of opportunities to put balls away and um, although I think it's gonna be tougher on grass it's gonna be tough to get that serve back but I'm gonna try my best 
we're both power hitters, and um, I think my advantage maybe is I have a, a lot more speed and and a lot more power on my serve, but she's very consistent, and she's picked up her court coverage also, and we both hit very well in the run. All right, Chris, do you agree with that, that assessment? That was a good assessment. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure about uh, the first serve being a lot more powerful because Lindsay Davenport has a huge first serve, and she, I think she places it better than Venus. But exactly, I mean, it's, it's Lindsay's court coverage will be very vital to her and her first serve percentage. Last summer, they met several times on hard courts in the States. Venus at one point said, no one can out hit me. Lindsay said, you know what, I'll take my chances. <laughs> and there's the results. 9-3 Davenport of Venus did have two wins last summer. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to look at 9-3 because that's going back four or five years. But you look at the recent results and both players have had good results. But once again, Venus Williams, will this be too much for her, too overwhelming for her, her first Wimbledon final? I know I didn't win my first Wimbledon final. I lost to Billie Jean in two sets and then the next year that I came back in 74 I won it so it's definitely pretty intimidating to be out there well they've met nine of those 12 prior meetings on hard courts three were on carpet last year they played five times which is one of the wonderful things about the women's tour the top players do have a series of matches with each other Lindsay won three of the five against Venus and now after the on and off rain, which everyone hopes is in the off position, ready to play with Venus Williams to serve. Well, Lindsay means business out here. Lindsay has much more emotional energy, I think, in reserve. If it comes down to a tight third set, she hasn't used it up like Venus has this tournament so far. But boy, you like to win that first game, you know, especially if you're serving. And these women want to hold serve. That's why if you're a little nervous, sometimes it's almost better to give your opponent the chance to serve first. Oh! Or might you give your opponent the serve if you felt they were I, I did because my serve stunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. But it's her first final. You think if she was a little jittery, she'd say, okay, Lindsay, you go Next. for it first and I'll just practice my returns. And when I'm feeling a little more comfortable on the grass, the second game, that's when I'll serve. Because right now she's down 30 love with a second serve. Well, that's the way Lindsay did it. She won the toss and chose to receive. It's a smart move on Lindsay's part. Oh. Remember, even in that match with Martina Hingis, Venus Williams, despite that powerful first serve, was broken a lot. And she's on the verge of being broken here. Well, Lindsay's two best shots are her serve and her return of serve. So it's almost like if Venus can get her into a rally and move her from side to side, I think mobility-wise, Venus has the edge there. And that's what she hopes to do. So there's the break for Lindsay Davenport to begin the match. And we invite you to log on to wimbledon.msnbc.com to chat live with Bud Collins. Plus, check out Chris's analysis of the ladies' final and the post-match press conference on the Wimbledon channel, all at wimbledon.msnbc.com. Miss Lindsay Davenport to serve. And you can jump on that msnbc.com website right now to chat with Bud. Hopefully 
Raiders a live picture of Bud's outfit today. Yeah. I, I oh, haven't seen what he's been wearing, but I can just imagine. Lindsay Davenport, when talking about if she wins Wimbledon, she said the win would be much more satisfying this year than last year because she's had to fight back a lot harder, a lot more comebacks in her matches. And remember, there's only been three women in the open air who have won Wimbledon back to back, Steffi, Martina, and Billie Jean. Love 30. So it's not always easy. And quickly, a Love 30 start on her first service game. Love 40. Both players, understandably, a little nervous. Ball just missed the line. Start. Almost exactly the same type of game we saw in the first game. One game on. Just the fourth time Venus Williams has played Wimbledon. And two painful quarterfinal losses, Yana Novotna in 98, Steffi Graf in 99. Yeah, but you know what? That's misleading because even though they were in the quarters, they, to me, they were the matches of the tournament. and. That, it showed me that she can definitely play on grass, because she has the all-court game. And this year, she drew world number one, Martina Hingis, in the quarterfinals. She's had some tough draws. <laughs> but I think it was Martina Hingis who had the tougher draw there. And maybe if they settle down now, they can start to hold their serve and this could be a wonderful match if they both play up to their potential. And you, you you don't always play up to your potential under pressure, but if they can just let the nerves go and be that focused, just play the ball, we could see some beautiful tennis. And it'll be interesting to see if there is any finesse in this match. Who is going to be the one that maybe drops shots or hits some slice balls, chips a little bit? You have a guess as to who might be the one? Or I think it would be Lindsay. I think Lindsay always has a plan B if things aren't working out for her. But I think Venus plays one way. And she, Lindsay Davenport is going to be hitting to Venus's forehand. That's the word out on 13, Venus. 15. There's almost a book out on every player and Venus makes more errors on that side. Backhand is much more compact. dependable shot is her backhand also. Well, she's beaten Capriati, Celis. That make her ready for the pace of Venus Williams? Or is it a whole other level? I mean, the way I look at it is she, she has yet to play her best match at Wimbledon. Oh! And, and, and Venus Williams holds her serve. Do these eyes belong to you? Well, Chris mentioned how difficult it has been to defend the ladies' championship in the open air at Wimbledon. The last four years here, four different champions. And that's something that uh, really has carried over to the other slams, Chris. has been a tremendous well, spread on the ladies' tour. Exactly. I mean, she has the depth at the top. We've ne we haven't seen this in so long. I mean, we, we went through the era of myself and Martina for, what, 10 or 15 years. Then Steffi Groff and Monica Sells were dominating. And great to see. It's just women coming out of so many different countries. Well, wonderful court coverage by Venus, and that's what I mean. If, if they both come out here playing their best tennis, 
Venus has to have the edge. If she can keep up that caliber of play, then she's got such a great shot at this title. that point the Fifth last eight. nine grand slams seven different ladies have won the singles championships and if venus williams wins here it would be eight, eight in the last ten Ow! 15 30. So Lindsay Davenport now trying to regroup. Ooh. Saves one break point. That serve really slid through the grass. 30, 40. You have to come to expect a few bad bounces on this grass. It's the end of the second week, the court is a little bit chewed up in specific places, especially at the baseline. You can see the brown patches. We saw Serena losing her footing a, a lot during her semifinal match. Well, now it's Lindsay that has been the more erratic of the two. So Venus Williams now up a break in the first set. For up to the minute scores and stats, be sure to visit the official Wimbledon website, which is Wimbledon.org. That's Wimbledon.org, powered by IBM. Fifteen line. Should nerves have worn off now for Lindsay? I think it's time to settle down. It's almost the middle of the first set. Perhaps she's been reading Venus's press. <laughs> oh! And the eight unforced errors glaring in the first four games. Venus there? Well, it would be interesting. It was interesting to see her coming into the net because this match is basically going to be played from the baseline, but this shows great confidence that she can come to the net. She sensed her opportunity, smart play, came in, the ball was high enough for her to put it away. And she's just going to get more and more confident if Lindsay doesn't get into this first set. This is very a dangerous time for Lindsay Davenport. Venus of a little over anxious, over, tends to overhit the ball. You'll never see her passive or not go for it enough. She, if anything, should go too much for the shot. Oh, oh two right there. bad errors. 30. But Richard tells her to go for every shot. She didn't need to go for the shot quite that much. And Lindsay was off the court. Right on the line. And that power point won by Venus. 40, 30. Such great reach from Venus and the better mover on the court. Lindsay was lunging towards that ball. Oh. 
Oh, another error from Venus. After Lipton, Lindsay Davenport went home for six weeks and she strained her back. When she came back, she did not do well in the Italian Open, lost the round of 16, lost the first round of the French, quarters of Eastbourne. So her preparation mm -hmm. hasn't been the best coming into Wimbledon. And plus she struggled in this tournament. And I sat here watching the final last year against Steffi Groff, and she, she so far has not convinced me that she's ready to win this title because that that form has isn't here y yet. Have you seen her play a match yet here? No. She did last year? Saw a glimpse when she beat Monica Sell 6 11 the third. But Monica got tired. I mean, Monica's not in good shape, and she sort of got tired in that match. Fitness was definitely a, the reason why she oh. lost that. That's why I thought coming into it, you know, Lindsay's got a good shot because she only has to play one great match at Wimbledon to win the title. But it has to be this match. Oh, big serve. So Venus Williams up 4-1 in the first. This week at IBM.com, we're talking about the IBM Web. They look like goggles, too. Okay, a little finesse from Venus Williams. Right, for Venus first. She is so calm right now. If you look at her face, her demeanor is... Love she should team. be the one nervous, but no, she comes up with this drop shot because she knows Lindsay is not the fastest player on the tour, and Lindsay was also three feet behind the baseline. Smart play. needs to up until now I believe she hasn't won more than two serves two points off her serve and she's used to holding that Good. seemed to take all the nerves away from Venus after she was broken to come and break right back that was a good opportunity for Lindsay after Venus lost that first game but she didn't take advantage of it torso of Lindsay being wrapped. I would imagine that has something to do with her lower back, but also probably her, her hamstring maybe, and that has to limit her reach a little bit and make her stiff. She does have a wrap very, very high on her left leg. You can barely see it there. I think it's wrapped all around her lower back also. What she needs to do is dictate the points, take the initiative, try to get a mid-court ball and come into the net. 30, she, as Billie Jean King has said, has the quickest hands of any of the top players at the net. One of the very few points thus far that she has been in control. It's almost like whoever dictates the point wins the point. percent both players this does bring to mind a little bit of Martina Navratilova's comments advocating the best of five for the women she says oftentimes for the men the first set is sort of a warm-up warm up. so maybe they should bring the men's down to two out of three then <laughs> <laughs> instead of the women's up to three out of five but this does show you how you, you have to be prepared you, in the women's side. You have no... You have to come mark. out out of the starting gate pretty quickly. Especially at a major event like this. Because the match could be over in a second. Now, Lindsay held there, but she was about uh, on the verge of being out of the set within 20 minutes. You can sort of see the wrap around her waist, and it's all the way down and to the top of her leg. 
like a mummy, <laughs> half a mummy. Plus, she hasn't been able to practice, have that extra practice in the, in the women's doubles. She and her partner, Good Karina, team. where are you? Karina got injured in their first round match here, and uh, they were seeded too. And, you know, it's, they like to play doubles, these women, because it gives them that extra time on the grass to get used to it. Serena and Venus are in the finals right now in the doubles. And she definitely looked like she was inhibited there with her movement. 30 low. Just a very light, light drizzle starting here. Well, Lindsay's hoping that it's going to rain because she can go back and talk to her coach and get a little bit of advice. Okay, what am I doing wrong? I'm down 4-2. Robert Landsdorf is her coach. Or used to be her coach. Now Van Hoff is coaching her. Robert Landsdorf, if you remember, coached Tracy Austin, and that's where she really got that good foundation. But there's her current coach, Robert Van Hoff, who's been with her since 96. And it's uh, he's, she's been traveling with him. And because the family doesn't come along, he's been the closest thing to her family. Robert Vantoff, so much a part of Lindsay Davenport's three Grand Slams and working on her mental toughness. Right. I mean, it's a very tough role, that coach, because it's not only going out and trying to improve your game and physically hitting with you, but it's also being a good influence and sort of a soulmate. I mean, you can vent your emotions, your anger if you're losing. He's helped her with her fitness. She lost like 25 pounds in last year, remember? Oh, too tough. Well, right now it is an overpowering Venus Williams within one game of the first set. This return by Venus. That's news because it's the first time since his injury last week that Sampras has been practiced. able to practice, right? But right now, Chris, this here on center court is turning into a mismatch. Save for that point, but Venus Williams. Venus Williams looks the the more mature out there. I mean, the, the more subdued. I mean, very, very focused. I think that's the influence of having Richard here with her because she asked him to come. She said, you know, my dad gives me a little more input about my tennis, and he's been a, a student of the game. You know, they've he's been their main coach, but they've used other resources over the years. Rick Macy. She's been to Boletari. She's had other coaches. Jack Kramer, I know, gave her a lot of advice. I just oh. continue to make Lindsay move. Yes, just move Lindsay. And, you know, I can't stress that Lindsay is not the better mover, but I think because of the injury, it's really accentuating the fact that she's definitely not moving as well as normal. And every time she stretched, she either misses the ball or she comes up with a defensive shot. And that's her only hope at this point is she needs to hold serve, get that first serve percentage higher because then she can dictate the point. Okay, so she doesn't ace Venus. At least she can be really the aggressive one in the rally and make the winner off the next shot. I mean, that's her only hope at this point. Venus ends up dictating play. That was a good return of serve, though. Venus took a chance there. But you just sense as they get into a long rally, Venus is going to cover the court better and get a lot more, chase a lot more balls down. So now we come to set point.
little scream. I think she knew it was just put so much into it that the chances are she was going to miss it. Overhitting the shot. That's the only time she, you'll never see her. She slipped just a bit there, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she slipped a bit, but you know, she that overhead, that ball was a little bit low to be hitting that big of a shot. Venus Williams will have a chance to serve for the first set. And don't forget, right now you can log on to wimbledon.msnbc.com. You can chat live with Bud Collins, who's answering email right now during the ladies' championship here at Wimbledon at wimbledon.msnbc.com, powered by Enron. That was an opportunity for Venus Williams. Set point. She's not out of danger. I mean, she's only one break up here. Point, a great message sent by Venus Williams. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a hard road back for Lindsay Davenport, down 5-3, but this is what she must do consistently. Look for that opportunity to come in. Look for any mid-court ball. Because she, too, at over 6 feet 2, has that long reach and would be tough to pass. And Venus Williams showing... Lindsay, you're going to have a hard time hitting a ball I can't get to. Well, I wouldn't want to make it close with Lindsay because she's the player that has the edge on experience. Love 30. Now her first double fault. So far, she is. Venus has served better than she did against Serena. She's had a very poor serving first set and still won. That was around the 50 percentile, wasn't it, in that, in that match? that point 15, the last game all of a sudden now she's ahead in this game only down a break <laughs> the tough thing about predicting Venus when she plays you know she 30. can hit a slew of winners and then make a slew of errors and still a, a little bit more unpredictability in her as a player versus a Lindsay who has been more consistent or a Hingis for that matter. She can never harness that and tighten up those airs. Boy, she, she'd be unbeatable. And coming back from Love 30, now set point. Lindsay jumping on what most feel is her one vulnerability. Right, second serve. And Lindsay's best asset. Good. She didn't have, she didn't overhit at that time, you know, I was hoping she'd just get the ball in close to the line. Good serve out wide. She wants to make Lindsay stretch because she senses that she's not moving as well with that bandage. Very effective. No. So Venus Williams 
is halfway there. She has taken the first set towards her first Wimbledon championship. Keep your eye on the ball. Look at the numbers from the first set. Well, I think that the winners, look at Davenport. I mean, she's not able to really, that shows me she's not dictating the, the play at all. And usually you see that number a lot higher in that column for her. Only one prior time has Lindsay Davenport lost the first set to Venus Williams and come back to win. That was at the Australian Open in 98. Well, she has to get that first serve for Sand. I mean, she, she at least has to hold her serve. I mean, that's first. Before she even thinks about returning Venus' serve, let's get that serve percentage a little bit higher. And what Davenport would like is an easier game. She's had break point against her in every service game. Well, she's given Venus a lot of opportunities for second serves, and Venus has been jumping on top of those shots. That's more like the Lindsay Ow. that we know, that we've seen play on center court. And it's, again, it's not only the power with that first serve. I'm sure that first serve isn't as hard as Venus Williams, but it's where she places the ball it was right down the tee. That's her best bet. She has to win either the point off her serve or off that next shot and take advantage of Venus's weak return. her best game. So a strong start to the second set for Lindsay Davenport. First game, second set. I'm still not used to them not sitting down after that first game, are you? I like it, though. <laughs> Don't you? Yeah, it's better for us. All right, while they do, let's get to the Affleck trivia question for today. The last woman to repeat as the Wimbledon singles champion. Chris gave it away. I earlier. think I've already given attention. the answer. I, I know the answer. <laughs> Let's see if anyone listened. Very, uh, there's a tendency to have a letdown too after winning the first set and very important for Venus also to hold her serve and to stay with Lindsay. Don't let her in the door. and she's so quick off the mark. Very light footed. She's just going from corner to corner. And I don't think Lindsay thought she had a chance there. It's one thing to get it. It's another thing to go for a winner. A great return by Davenport. But Chris, do you think the leaner, because after, after her six months off there, Venus has the leaner look to her. She's moving better? Yes, she, I think she's moving better, and she feels more comfortable on the grass, and she's getting, her footing is, is, what, is superb. 
But if you look at the past history of tall players, they generally don't move that fast. They have great reach and power, but she's the exception. Plus the fact that on grass, you have to get down lower for the ball because the bounces are lower. Richard Williams um, devised this drill for both his daughters. It's called the Compton drill. And what happens is Serena and Venus are at the service line. They face each other and they hit headshots back and forth to toughen them up, he said. Oh. And what it does is it just quickens your reflexes. Headshots, meaning literally at each other's Oh, head. you just hit the, the ball as hard as you can uh, right at the service line, which is the middle of the court, to toughen you up. You know, he, tells, he told them not to flinch, just, you know, use your hands. Be quick with your hands. That's why they're so... Strong and doubles. And they've been lucky enough to practice with one another. I think that's really helped their game. I mean, all the other women coaches get, yes. you know, they hire male coaches and hitting partners, but these two women have had each other since the age of, what, six or seven, since they started playing the game, and it's worked well for them. And while the Williams family is here on Mass, Lindsay Davenport, no family members here. She did have a cousin visiting her during the week. <laughs> and and he, he left her. Left, yeah. said it was, I've been away from home too long. I need to get home. <laughs> Poor Lindsay. <laughs> Stay for the finals? I don't think so. There's so many stories about Lindsay. I mean, I, I was in the locker room. I was in the locker room at Wimbledon last year when she had won, and she's trying to track her mother down. Mm -hmm. The third call, finally, she found her at a club playing league tennis. And at the Australian, she called her mom after she won. She said, Mom, did you win the match? And her mother said, no, I was watching a rerun on another channel. <laughs> So the break for Davenport. The first since the first game. And now the answer to our Affleck trivia question. Last woman to repeat in singles. Survey says, not surprisingly, Steffi Groff in 1996. Steffi Groff, who's come back to Wimbledon this year to support her boyfriend. You see Billie Jean King, who the captain gosh, of the Olympic team mm -hmm. this year. Venus has made the team. Lindsay's made the team. That uh, naming of the Olympic team is due on Monday, and uh, that's the question, whether Serena will be well, the fourth member of the team. Right. I think Monica has already been selected yes. because of the computer ranking. It's and based on the rankings. Certainly, it, it, I would think that Billie Jean would, especially if Venus and Serena win the doubles here at Wimbledon, choose them for the doubles team. 15 on. And by the way, we should also make certain it's not that Lindsay Davenport does not have a great relationship with her family. She's very no, close with all no. of the members. She has two older sisters who are both married and have their exactly. own families. It's a good athletic family. It's very mm -hmm. active and, you very know. Very close with her mother. But yeah, they just don't put pressure right. on her. I, I would personally like to meet them one day. I'm, I miss not meeting them. I think I've met all the test parents. Another tough seven. overhead. It's in a deep position. Good disguise. You can go either way with that cross court or down the line. That's the beauty of the two-handed backhand. You never can tell where it's going. Oh. Both these players' backhands are the better shot. Shot. I haven't seen that drop shot before. And a one-handed backhand drop shot, nonetheless, and she has a two-handed backhand. A surprise element here. And is that part of the game, Chris, when Venus Williams has a little more strategy than I did a few years ago? Well, I, I think, again, the word out on Lindsay is you have to move her, mm -hmm. and you have to get her off the court, force her to come into the net, hit some low slice shots. 
You just don't want to hit in her power zone. And I guess that was an attempt at a drop shot from Lindsay Davenport. So Venus Williams breaks back. Well, when I got hurt in this work, just glad I had supplemental. Right. Right. One here twice. 57 and 58. Now, of course, Dana Garrison was runner up. But Althea doesn't like to venture out in public at all now. And, and I, she was sorely missed at the championship ceremony last week. I, I, someone asked me, you know, who are you really looking forward to meeting? And I've met her before. I actually have a, a cute little story where I was playing in a tournament as a pro, and my opponent in the finals, Carrie Reed, I think broke her thumb and had to default the finals. Day. Well, the tournament promoter was horrified because they had like 5,000 people and no match. Althea Gibson was, was down there in South Florida, and they called her up, and she said, I'll play her. She's 48 years old. <laughs> no she probably hadn't played in a while. She said, I'll play Chris. I could beat her with my big serve. And it was the funniest match, and she still had that big, booming serve. And, and did that she? No, of course not. <laughs> that, the, the confidence. And I, I ended up giving her games, just like, you know, I would hope the current players would give me games right now. But she wasn't afraid to get out there. You know, she, she was a great, great human being. And a real role model, and uh, I, I know she's watching this match, and we want to give her our best. And still doing a lot financially to support inner city youths and tennis players in the in Jersey area. Talk about character. bit as great an athlete as the Williams sisters and talk about she retired at 30 years old she had won five Grand Slam she had to retire at 30 years old at her peak because she was only getting paid six pounds a day and that couldn't sustain her that's a shame isn't it it's so uh, she signed a professional contract well then she she traveled with the Globetrotters I know and played some ex exhibition matches and and I believe went on the golf tour and qualified for a tournament that makes me remember babe Dietrichson when she was Excellent, two sports. Oh. Well, once again, the angles, and the way Venus Williams continues to move Lindsay Davenport, a great sign for Venus's chances. She's definitely the better athlete out there. And with what I've seen this term is so far, she's using her head, she's dealing with the pressure well. And we haven't seen that, but that's, not a criticism that that you can't expect that when you don't play junior term is just to come right into the pros and expect to deal well with the pressure and it's taken them a few years to adjust to that 30 40 but right now she's in trouble of being broken Davenport. As we dive back, look at this right into the NBC archives for Althea Gibson at Wimbledon. Fifty-seven and fifty-eight here. She won the French, also won the United States Open. She was quoted as saying after she won Wimbledon that shaking hands was the queen with the queen was a long way from being forced to sit in the colored section of the bus. You know, she was, she, you know, was very respectful of her roots, but. Love 15. And this, of course, the 25th anniversary of Arthur Ashe's amazing center court triumph in the men's championship over Jimmy Connors. Richard Williams has invoked the memory of both Althea Gibson and Arthur Ashe this week as Venus and Serena have charged through the field. Right now, neither player able to do much uh, in terms of consistency.
winner's still a little too infrequent for Dad. Well, Murray. but Lindsay is sneaking through the second set. Boy, up 3-1. Still down a break point here. Took a chance there and came into the net. 30, 40. <laughs> Someone just blurted out, go Lindsay. I think they want to see a match. They, so far this match has been pretty much one-sided. Oh, beautiful shot from Venus. So Venus Williams breaks back. We're on serve. Your phone. The racket preparation. That's what I love about the Williams sisters. Their racket is back right when they see the ball on the other side of the net. So all they have to do is move their feet to the ball, and then they can just connect with the ball, and most of them are winners. And Chris, you mentioned in the first uh, set that Venus Williams was dictating play, and as you look at the winners she's had, even in this set, the breaks of serve have not been Lindsay Davenport winners as much as mistakes by Venus. She had three double faults in her last service game. She's still dictating play, though. <laughs> but as you said earlier, if and when Venus Williams minimizes the errors, it's frightening to think. What oh, the result she will could, be. The, the word harness. I mean, if she could just bring it in and not necessarily go for the lines on every single shot and think about going three inches within the line, she'll still win the point. But conservative is not a word in her head. I mean, she doesn't know what that word means. It's go all out, be aggressive. I mean, that's what Papa's telling her. And my complaint or criticism in the past has been when you have the whole court to hit a ball into, you don't have to hit it 100 miles per hour. Just be efficient, get the job done, and win the point. brown patch and the ball can just might not be a true bounce. Well, the Browns keepers here at the All England Lawn Tennis Club, Chris, say they, they notice how the brown spots are more and more confined to the baseline as years go by. It's been more baseline tennis. The, the courts are in better shape so you can stay in the back and have some rallies. We've seen a lot of rallies, this year, especially in the women's. There have been a lot of, you feel like you're at Roland Garros with all the rallies. Yes, or again, the double fault. Jumps up to bite Venus, her fifth. Four in the last two service games. crucial when you get to the finals of Wimbledon you can't every game is crucial but you just sense that to be even a three all and and to be up a set she'd be in a much better position than to be down four two great serve and there she is trying to keep her composure so three all second set tomorrow once again breakfast at Wimbledon and join us as Pete Sampras tries for tennis history his attempt to win his record-breaking 13th Grand Slam title, he'll face Aussie Patrick Raptor coming off a spectacular match yesterday with Andre Agassi, and we expect that kind of a, of a crowd on the hillside here on the grounds again tomorrow. 9 a.m. Oh. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, breakfast at Wimbledon here on NBC. Love 15. 
So I made McEnroe pick this match yesterday. So before we're through today, we'll get your you, pick on tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow's match. I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's Sampras. Oh, it's Sampras. I just think he didn't need a, to think. He has a better return. It's mm -hmm. it's serving and returning, and Sampras is a great serve and a good return serve. And I don't think Rafter has a great return serve. <laughs> and he didn't need it against Agassi because Agassi didn't serve volley, so he wasn't really pressed to come up with any winning shots. But against Pete, he's going to have to pass well. And here's Lindsay up at the net. Like I said before, she has a plan B. And she's not going to stay at the baseline. She's going to try to come in if she can, get an opportunity. Would have been nice to have a little topspin lob 15, at that 15. point. Slowly slipping through her fingers this, this title. There's Rosie Casals. She and Billie Jean King won a bunch of Wimbledon titles together. Chris now, 15, the defending champ, has reached the moment where she must be strong. She was up a break now, two points to go down a break. Left versus. Twenty unforced errors by Davenport, and usually that number of winners matches the number of errors, and that's not the case today. Venus is forcing her not to play her game. Oh, bad oh, double fault. Not close. And Venus Williams is now two games from the Wimbledon Championship. Every business needs room to grow. Some singles by the great Billy Jean King. Man. Her first Grand Slam title was here. Look at that list. Maria Bueno, Martina. This recently is uh, Yana Novotna with her emotional win here two years ago. Oh. 15 left. And now if Venus Williams can corral her serve, she yeah. may be on that list. If she can get that first serve in, high percentage, and hold her nerve, this title's hers. Unless Lindsay comes up with some surprise goods Whoa. here. 15 on. Lindsay Davenport, who's won three all, three Grand Slams. She's won the French. She's won the Aust She has not won the French, but she's won the Australian, mm -hmm. the US Open Wimbledon. The French is the, the one elusive title that she's still searching for. And because the French is based on how well you move, and long rallies and patience. I, I sort of wonder if she'll ever win that tournament. She likes to end the points quickly. She prefers the power game and to, to make her winners the first three or four shots. Good volley by Lindsay Davenport. She's played a lot of doubles in her career. She won some Grand Slam events, played some mixed. 15, 13. She's looking more and more natural up at the net. I think we all know what she needs to do. It's just a matter of if Venus can give her some mid-court balls to come to the net. But those serves are just too tough. It happened so quickly, just an hour on court. And Venus Williams can see the end line. It's all about first serve, second serve. Uh, women's grass court tennis is now like men's grass court tennis. It's the, it's the first two shots of the point that will determine who wins the point. And boy, Lindsay has to take advantage of that second serve right now more than ever. She just has to put it away. And here she has another chance. Let's see what she does with this, with this second serve. See if she moves in and cracks it. And she does. And 
and she wins the point. She not only cracked it, we got a smile out of her too, but she used that opportunity to come into the net and put away a volley with this return. Went for the angle, saw Venus on the defensive, the ball popped up, there she was, she put it away, wrong-footed her, hit it behind her. And after an hour of pretty bad body language, <laughs> there's the first bright sign from Lindsay Davenport. Serving at four all. But boy, what you have to do to win a point from Venus, you have to hit the lines mm -hmm. like three or four times in a row. Fault! Ooh, bad double fault. 15 on. Fifth for Lindsay Davenport. And her second serve has not been very effective today either. Well, second serve points won 19%. That's pretty low. Venus is having target practice with her second serve. area so she knows she has to come up with something different she got her off the court and good touch and Richard Williams back after a brief trip outside so effectively against Martina Hingis. Look at this. 15, 14. Too much for Lindsay to handle. That was a low shot to try that. That wasn't even around her shoulder area. So two points to break for the sixth time in the match. And now it's Lindsay's turn to come in. Now it's a matter of whoever comes into the net wins the point. So that's going to be the strategy from now on. Get them off the court, come into the net, hit that swing volley for a winner. Both of these players have that shot down pat. But yet another point that to Lindsay Davenport is like match point. Ooh. And Venus Williams will serve for the Wimbledon Championship when we return to center court. What would you do with a crystal face able to withstand? He didn't do it the conventional way, that's for sure. Not playing junior tournaments, being very boastful and about their tennis abilities before they even won a tournament. But it's all coming true right now. Now the hope for Lindsay Davenport is that Venus has been broken three times in this set. The double faults of come more regularly. No, oh, this is not when you want to start spraying balls and double faults, and this is where the final is all about pressure. She has to close out the match, something she hasn't done so successfully in the past, but many things she's ready to do now. And she did against Hingis. Well, she served and won four straight points on her serve. This is not happening. Wow. This is, this is what Lindsay was hoping for. This is where when you walk over the side of the net and you're 
serving for the match. You just, she seemed to rush those three points. You just want to take your time and just soak it all in and concentrate. I blew that, didn't I? <laughs> no, it's not easy, Five serving minutes. for the match. Her first Wimbledon final. When that happened, I, I imagine once it must have happened to you. Did you want to dig a hole in the court? Uh, Just go high? Well, this is where ner the nerves can paralyze you, and the serve is the first thing that went in my game because it's the only shot you have complete control over. The toss, my elbow couldn't get up high enough. Your head comes down, and you just can't let it flow. She'll be a little more relaxed this game, I would hope. But meanwhile, you know, she opened the door for Lindsay Davenport. Lindsay's going to take the whole house. You just can't give her any opportunities like this. Lindsay, here Lindsay is searching for her best tennis, and here's Venus, who's played her best tennis. Can't she keep that level up? Well, in a set titled, Can Anybody Here Hold? There have only been two holds in 10 games. Lindsay Davenport up 30 love. Also shows that the court isn't lightning fast and the balls are a little bit heavy, so power doesn't play as big a role as it has in the past when the balls were lighter. Yeah, that's, that's a good play. She really wants to jerk Lindsay around the court. She likes to hug that baseline. She feels more comfortable back there. Doesn't like to move forward unless it's on her own terms and she's approaching, coming into the net. net court to go over the other side. It's a bit unlucky. These nets are so tight, though, they always wind up on your side. to Venus Williams. She's clocking Lindsay's second serve. That was not a bad second serve either, but Venus just likes those shots on the run. Sensing, wow, she's slipping. But look how great an athlete she is. She gets back up and not only gets the ball back, but goes for a winner. Is Lindsay not hitting with quite the angles she'd like? I think Lindsay, the, out of the corner of her eye, she saw that mm -hmm. she just didn't want to go for a big shot because she thought she had the point. <laughs> Too good. Lindsay served right into Venus. Jammed her. She had a defensive return and then wrong footed her. <laughs> so Lindsay Davenport struggles but holds. Was that directed at Dick Ebersol, perhaps? Chairman of NBC Sports. He's taking notes for us. <laughs> He's reading who the winner's next opponent is. Oh. Love 15. It's the first sign of emotion we saw from Lindsay Davenport, the first sign of 
sort of excitement and her whole body language had changed. She has a little more zip to her walk. I just hope they they both didn't uh, read their press this morning because, you know, they ask all kinds of tennis experts to pick. And I always made an effort not to read the press when I was playing in the final because it, you start to kind of get mad at these players. I hope Lindsay didn't Love see that I picked team. Venus to win this match. Which you did, indeed. Which I did. I gave her the slight edge, but out enormous respect for Lindsay. And I know what she's capable of. We just haven't seen her best tennis. Seeing, starting to see signs of a better Lindsay Davenport, though. Two points from a third set. You used to turn on the, on the TV and hear Virginia Wade from BBC say, I don't think Martina is going to be Chris in the final. And I would, you know, just thanks a lot, Virginia. You know? So I'd turn the TV down the locker room, even. She needed that serve. Holding her second ace. She hopes to get to a tiebreaker in this set. It's a different, big difference in serving between this game and when she was up 5-4, boy. She's going to remember that game for a long time, win or lose, I think. Ouch. Oh. Of course, Venus called it first, oh, but... The umpire agreed. What happened? Lindsay's asking what happened. Ball was called good by the lines person and immediately overruled by Jerry Armstrong. Jerry Armstrong called it out. That, that's a huge point. Well, it was. A questionable call. The lines person again. called this ball good. And Jerry Armstrong immediately yeah, looked set out. out. Looked out to me. chance there and that was a second serve point Six it gets Venus Six Williams seconds. into a tie break this is where Venus wants to be because the pressure undoubtedly has to be on Lindsay Davenport just to she's out of the tournament if she loses this tiebreaker but Venus Williams still has a third set shot if she loses it first serve to Davenport Oh, good play, Lindsay. Not afraid to come in. One zero, Miss Davenport. So in their head-to-head -head meetings, Lindsay Davenport 3-0 in the tie breaks. And that has to be going on in Venus's mind too. Players think about the past experiences and scores. When you're nervous, everything races through your mind. winner hasn't she there's the angle she has enough she puts enough top spin on it so it just dips it's not a deep shot it's a mid-core shot but good angle Chip the ball, slice a little bit, not hit her characteristic firm topspin forehand. Defensive shot instead of going for the shot. It was right. I think she couldn't believe how easy it was that it was right to her. Once again, hit the top of the net, but didn't go over. Williams. 
Got a great return there by Venus. Well, and Venus's forehand side is the side that breaks down under pressure. And I'm amazed how consistent it is. who's overhitting the ball. And now it is Venus's tiebreak and championship to win. He's up 4-1 with two serves. But look what she's doing, unlike at 5-4 when she rushed over and played a sloppy game in an, uh, a really tense game. She's taking her time, isolating each point. She, look at her, she's, she's stopping, she's bouncing. She's gonna take her full time allotment. Oh, wow, you get big first serve, and this is what she needs right now. A switch of ends at 5-1 Williams in the tiebreak. That's five straight points. She let a, a big opportunity get away at 5-4, and she is not going to let that happen again. still have a chance to serve it out on her racket after two points from Davenport. and she's more determined than ever to close out this match in two sets. Championship point. chances on Williams serve. bit bold, but it was Venus's party. And Big Sis has her championship. 
Well, some may think it's silly to be holding up signs in a situation like this, but somehow you can't be offended. You have to just soak in the moment and enjoy the wonderful feeling that this family must be feeling right now. And the little girl that we saw dance for joy after Martina Hingis's victory, after her win over Hingis in the quarterfinals, that little girl's exuberance we saw again after this match point. And that serve that let her down from clinching the match at 5-4 just fell apart. But she held strong and she served some good first serves in the tiebreaker. Bottom line, she held her nerve and was just the better athlete out there. On Thursday, it was almost a subdued Venus Williams, the winner coming to net. And today, nothing but joy. The one trophy she says she's dreamt of since she first started playing tennis at age nine is hers. And we could hear Richard Williams literally hear him dancing right over our heads. They're stomping above this boot. And she has her dress, her ball gown, all picked out. Well, there are the moments when it's no, no longer about coach and player. It's about father and daughter. And Venus Williams has won the Wimbledon Ladies Championship. The presentation to follow. The 2000 Lincoln Navigator. It's so luxurious. The victory. Chris, you've been on both sides of this. What is Lindsay thinking right now? If I only had gotten to the third set, I would have had a real shot. You know, you think about your game and what you could have done to, to have won the match, but Lindsay's done it before. She can't be too devastated. Well, Venus Williams has had this moment before. This is not the first time she's held that Wimbledon trophy over her head. And I remember 10 years ago, she came to my home, wanted to see my Wimbledon trophies. Her father came and took numerous pictures of her. Of course, the trophy was a little bit smaller. We get a replica when we win this Wimbledon. We don't get that exact one. I wish we would, but our name is inscribed on that trophy. And she was just thrilled just to be able to touch a Wimbledon trophy. This is the tournament she's dreamed about. Serena dreamt about the U.S. Open. Venus has always dreamt about Wimbledon. <laughs> well, he said he had tears in his eyes for Serena after her loss on Thursday. Different kind of tear in the eye of Richard Williams right now. Jerry Armstrong, the chair umpire, now will be saluted. The, the trophy, the ladies' singles trophy that Venus Williams holds is referred to as the Rosewater Dish or the Venus rose water dish there are symbols on it representing the four elements water goddess mercury jupiter and venus and she's looking for it right now <laughs> well, they're probably looking at the names the past champions and now one of the great british players sue barker broadcasting for the bbc to interview both players Lindsay, I know this isn't very easy to uh, talk right now. It's probably the last thing you feel, but we really would like to, to hear from you. Venus played extremely well today, didn't she? She did, and uh, I knew she was playing really well throughout the tournament. I knew it was going to be a tough match, and uh, starting to get back in a second, but uh, she was uh, too strong at the end again, and um, I congratulate her on winning her first Grand Slam. Lindsay, just one other question, because you came in here, I know you've had injuries and you've been suffering from a cold, but uh, you got through to the final and, and you certainly can look back at it and be extremely proud. Yeah, um, getting to the finals here was a great achievement and I worked really hard to just achieve that and uh, I'm not going to walk away hanging my head and uh, hopefully be back here many more times to try and win it again. Well said. Thank you.
Okay, Venus, congratulations. I know uh, you've dreamt of this moment. So what does it feel like now it's happened? Yeah, it's really great because I've been working so hard all my life to be here. And, you know, it's strange because, like, I'll go to bed at night and I'll dream, and I'll dream that I've won a Grand Slam, and when I wake up, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I've done it, I don't have to wake up like that anymore. <laughs> Uh, that was a fantastic celebration that, uh, that happened just now. Yeah, you know what? I, I can't hold back in life. And this is just the way I am, my personality. Of, I don't like to miss out on celebrations or a great laugh. <laughs> and how nice is this trophy, huh? It, this is unbelievable. And um, I just have to say that it, it is better than the men's cup, in my opinion. <laughs> We've seen throughout the championships how close you are as a family, and I know uh, Serena has some words for you. What was she saying to you out there? What do you remember? Were you taking it in? Well, she was saying how, you know, she was really so emotional. Like, when she won the US Open, it was all I could do just, like, to hold back from just crying. And so she's up there, you know, trying to hold back, and my dad's so excited. You we put the hours in. <laughs> And how tough was it to win that last point? Because first, you know, the Grand Slam final, the win, how tough was it? Well, it, everything, you just have to stay calm because it's not finished until the last point, no matter how close you get. And I just wanted to hang on to it, and then hopefully I'll be back next year doing the same thing. And, and you've got a doubles final here as well. Doubles final tomorrow. Yeah, we do. And the strange part is, Serena and I, we, do not a, we don't have a doubles ranking. We... Um, Wimbledon gave us a wild card, thank you. <laughs> we're, we're in the final, and uh, after this, we will have a ranking. <laughs> and I'm sure, Venus, that people would like, you know, because Lindsay, a great champion, and you, you've beaten one of the best out here today. Yeah, and... Uh, the thing is, we've been in the same boat. We've both been coming back from injury, and we are both in the final here. So that's pretty amazing for both of us. And it, most of all, we're just excited to be in the final because we had so many, I don't know about, about you, but I had a lot of problems, and I think she did too. <laughs> I don't think you're going to stop smiling for quite some time, are you? Have you got your ball gown ready for the champion's ball? I do, I do. And... <laughs> I bought my gown before I came here because I was determined to get this. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to seeing it in the papers. Thank you very much. To Lindsay Davenport and to Venus Williams, the Wimbledon champion. Money well spent, Chris. She bought a gown in advance. And a nice moment. That, in fact, was a break with tradition. That was the first time in the history of the championships Wimbledon that the participants in a final had been interviewed on court. And normally, I, I, I love the tradition here, but it's great for the fans to hear what they're really feeling right after the match. And now the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter point of the day, the point that Venus Williams will forever remember, match point in the tiebreak. Not nervous here. She's moving so well. Lindsay had a big opportunity. Look at the leap. Look how high she can jump. She is so ecstatic. Very unsimilar to her match against Serena, where it was very solemn. And looking first to her father, they, ha they are so close. You know, she's the oldest daughter, as proud as he was of Serena winning the US Open. I think he had a special fondness for Venus. You get the sense that yes, indeed, at least among the tennis players in the family, Venus is daddy's girl. And now she's daddy's champion.